Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from ASUS. This is the ASUS Rampage 4 Gene. It is a socket 2011 motherboard for Sandy Bridge E processors and it is an ROG board. That's Republic of Gamers, which means it's ASUS's premium line of gaming motherboards. Let's take a closer look at the box. Uh, Intel's second generation Extreme processors or Sandy Bridge E processors only come in Core i7 varieties, at least as of the filming of this video, so uh, you get support for those of course. It has the LGA 2011 socket for Sandy Bridge E processors, has the X79 chipset and all of the goodness that comes along with it, and you get SLI and Crossfire X support for two-way SLI or Crossfire X. And uh, if you're wondering why only two-way, it's because this is a micro ATX motherboard which means it's a little bit smaller, a little bit less room for PCI expansion slots. Uh, you get the Supreme FX2, that is a eight channel high definition audio codec from ASUS. You also get the Extreme Engine Digi Plus 2, that's power delivery, digital power delivery for your processors so you can have more precise tuning for your overclocking needs. You get the ASUS Game First software, which lets you prioritize um, your applications to make sure, especially if you're gaming, that those have highest priority. You don't have any lag or slowdown if you're doing anything else in the background. And of course, the aforementioned two-way SLI or Crossfire X support. So let's move on with an unboxing and show you guys what comes with the motherboard. There's the motherboard. We'll come back to that. Uh, you get a ROG Do Not Disturb I'm, game, I'm Gaming door hanger so you can hang that on your door and keep people from barging in on you whether you're gaming or whatnot. Uh, you of course get an input output shield for the back of your computer case. It's black. It's got labels on all of your inputs and outputs. You get a Republic of Gamers labeled black SLI connector included in the box. Uh, you get diesel guys which is ASUS's fantastic Q connector right there. So. Uh, for front panel connections, you plug your front panel connectors into that little block and then plug the whole block into the motherboard. It's fantastic. It makes it much easier to connect to your front panels. You get this little pamphlet on ROG Connect, which is another feature of this motherboard. You can use an external uh, laptop or other uh, computer, plug in via a USB port, and use that to remotely overclock or adjust settings on the motherboard itself. Here are some additional cables. Here is the full Rampage 4 Gene user's guide, very uh, helpful to keep on hand while you're doing your build. You even get a set of stickers there so you can label all of your hard drive and optical drive connectors so if you're doing updates to your computer in the future, you'll know exactly what's plugged in where. Uh, there's a little insert here, what is that about? Oh, that's a notice about RAID or AHCI mode if you're using the X79 controller. Full user's manual. You get the Rampage 4 Gene uh, software as well as driver discs. Uh, there's a little ROG sticker in there as well, which you can probably see. There it is, the gray sticker. Case badge to pop onto your case. Uh, you get some of the included software in here as well as drivers. Uh, generally speaking, it's best to head over to the ASUS website to download the latest drivers for your motherboard to make sure that you have enhanced compatibility and performance. You get a sticker. Um, right there, ROG sticker, you can put that on your window or on the case or on your case side window or wherever you feel it's appropriate. And then of course you get a full complement of cables. So you get six serial ATA cables right here. Uh, they all have little clasps on them. They will all be serial ATA Revision 3 compatible. Uh, looks like all of them also have L brackets on one end. So all these are straight plugs to L brackets six total of those and then here's your uh, white USB to USB mail to mail uh, ROG connect cable so you can use that to connect an external laptop uh, to the motherboard and here's a look at the Rampage 4G motherboard itself I'm starting here on the back so you guys can see the PCB uh, which I'm gonna say is black it might be a very very dark brown but uh, depends on how colorblind you might be uh, right here at the top they have a support beam and that's right underneath their uh, cooling solution for the voltage regulation modules Right there is the uh, silver backplate for your LGA 2011 socket. And then scattered throughout, we have black uh, spring-loaded screws, and those are what are attaching the additional heat sinks on the board. So you can remove those if you have the desire to. Uh, moving on here to the front of the board, I'm going to start off by going over the uh, fan header locations because they're scattered throughout. There's five total, including the CPU fan. Uh, there's a case fan header right there. Uh, I should also mention these are all 4-pin PWM-enabled 
fan headers. So uh, one there in the top left, uh, CPU fan header right here next to the LED, an optional CPU fan header right here. So if you're going with the CPU cooling solution that uses two fans, you can plug both in there, or you can use that as a case fan header. Uh, you get one more here right next to the 24-pin uh, motherboard power connector, and then finally one more here in the bottom center. So that gives you five total. Next up, let's go over all of your motherboard inputs and outputs and connectors and all that good stuff, provided I don't drop the motherboard. Uh, starting down here in the bottom right, you have your front panel connectors, and those will line up with that white Q connector I showed you guys. Next to that is a serial ATA port, and this is actually a serial ATA port for the X79 chipset. Uh, Asus does have an add-on serial ATA controller here, so that gives you a bit of extra serial ATA, uh, but for the native controller, uh, they've routed one of your serial ATA revision two, three gigabit per second ports right down here at the bottom, and then there's another one on the back panel in the form of an eSATA port. Uh, next to that, you have a, a USB 2.0 header, another USB 2.0 header. There's that fan header that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you have a go button right there. You have a start and reset button, surface mounted right there for starting and reset. Uh, and you get an SPDIF optical connector, front panel audio, and then finally over here on the left side is your Supreme FX3 uh, digital audio processor uh, with all of the related hardware right there. Moving on to the PCI Express area, the long red slots right there. All of these PCI Express slots are PCIe Revision 3 uh, compatible. So uh, you get PCI Express Rev 3 with these, which gives you additional bandwidth and forward compatibility with uh, video cards that will be coming out in the next year or two. We're already seeing a few of them come out right now. Uh, top one is full length 16X and it is wired for 16X. The, the third one here also wired for 16X and that's what you're gonna wanna use if you're going with a two card SLI or Crossfire X solution. In between those, you have a 4X PCI Express slot. And although it is 4X, I did want to point out if we can see right there, it's actually open-ended, so um, if you do have a longer card that you want to install there, you do have the option to do so. It will just be limited to, to PCIe 4X uh, communication with the CPU. At the bottom here is an additional full-length 16X uh, PCI Express slot, and that one's wired for 8X. Moving over here to the right, we have our X79 chipset that's right beneath this uh, cooling solution right there. It does have a heat pipe that routes up to this radiator so you get adequate cooling for your X79 chipset there. That X79 chipset controls some of these SATA ports, but not all of them. So um, on the far right here, the black ones are some more of your, piece, of your SATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second ports. Next to that are your natively controlled X79 SATA revision 3 uh, connectors, so 6 gigabit per second, and then you get two additional SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second ports there on the left side, and those are controlled by an add-on Asmedia ASM1061 controller. Some, some additional SATA Rev 3 ports there for those of you with uh, high-speed storage needs. And I must say we fall into that category, but more on that in the future. Moving up the side, we have a 20-pin USB 3.0 connector. Right above that, we have our full-length 24-pin main motherboard power connector. Uh, there's that fan header right next to that. Moving up the side, uh, next to our CPU fan headers, we have a debug LED, so if you're having any problems uh, getting your system up and running, you can use that LED for troubleshooting. Very handy to have. And then finally, move on to the main event, which is our CPU socket area right here. So right in the middle is our very large LGA 2011 socket. Uh, it's got two, bra uh, two handles there that hold the CPU in the socket. It's got a universal mounting solution, so most of your aftermarket CPU heatsink fans, uh, you can mount directly to this bracket without the need to apply a back plate. Uh, above it is your voltage regulators, and uh, you get eight-phase CPU power delivery uh, using the DigiPlus 2 power delivery system. Uh, you get quad-channel memory, uh, which is inherent to the uh, Sandy Bridge E platform, uh, but you can put up to 32 gigabytes of memory if you're going to go with 8 gigabyte DIMMs in your memory sockets right there. And the memory is uh, compatible with overclock speeds of up to 2400 megatransfers per second, which is pretty nice overclock speeds there. Also, of course, uh, supports Intel's extreme memory profiles. Uh, so if you have XMP, 
compatible memory. You can plug it in there and use the XMP profile settings to automatically dial in your overclocked memory speeds. Uh, you get a nice beefy heat sink right there above for your VRMs. Uh, you get a four plus four uh, CPU power connectors, so that's for supplemental CPU power, your EPS connector right there. You can use a four pin connector uh, if you're not gonna be doing too much overclocking, overclocking, or you can pop off this panel there and use an eight pin connector and that will give you all the power you need for your CPU overclocking. There is a heat pipe that runs between these two heat sinks right here, so that will uh, allow adequate heat dissipation for, uh, especially if you're gonna be overclocking, that's very necessary. And then lastly, we move on to our inputs and outputs uh, here for your back panel. So you get a combo PS2 port for a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, you get a couple USB 2.0 ports. Uh, you get a reset button right there. Uh, you get a Toslink uh, digital, out, audio, digital audio output right there. There's your ROG Connect button that you use in tandem with this white port right there. That's your ROG Connect port. Uh, you get three more USB 2.0 ports there on top, two more USB 2.0 ports right here, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven USB 2 total plus the ROG Connect. Uh, you get Intel integrated gigabit LAN right there, so the uh, high quality Intel uh, LAN processor right there, which uh, is highly compatible and also very effective. Uh, you get that final uh, SATA Revision 2 port right there in the form of an eSATA port that's also natively controlled that's routed directly over to the X79 chipset, a couple USB 3.0 ports, and then finally all of your uh, digital, I'm sorry, your analog audio outputs right there. Uh, before we close I wanted to add real quick what exactly this go button does because I wasn't sure when I first went over the board. So uh, it has a couple functions tied to it. If you press it before post it will enable the MemOK function, which is ASUS's uh, sort of built-in utility that will help uh, to troubleshoot, especially if you're having problems getting your system to post with different memory configurations. Uh, so you can use that for MemOK. Uh, also, while you're in your operating system, in tandem with the included software uh, from ASUS, you can use that to enable some preset overclock profiles. One other thing, a quick correction, is this button on the back which I thought might be clear CMOS, uh, I said reset, but that is a clear CMOS button, so you have an external option to do that. Lastly, I did want to go over some of the software that's included on the support DVD that's included in the box, because you do get some additional software beyond what you would typically expect to get with a motherboard. So you get the ASUS AI Suite 2, you get the ROG version of CPU-Z, which is an ROG-themed uh, CPU-Z version, which looks pretty cool. You get the ROG Game First utility, Sound Blaster X5 MB2 utility, ROG Men Tweak It Utility, ROG Theme, ASUS AI Charger Plus, WinZip, ASUS USB 3.0 Boost, which can increase your USB 3.0 transfer speeds, ASUS Web Storage, Daemon Tools Pro Standard, and Kaspersky Antivirus with a one-year license. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, once again, this has been the ASUS Rampage 4 Gene featuring the LGA 2011 socket and the X79 chipset from Intel. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.